Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I just got done watching Apple's big keynote announcement, which they do every September. And like every September before this one, we got new iPhones, new AirPods, and new Apple Watches. You could have predicted exactly what was going to go into this video. Some nice revisions of hardware, but nothing new and groundbreaking. And of course, the press is getting very frustrated and disappointed in Apple because they're not talking about their AI strategy. And of course, the Apple intelligence feature is very much a nothing burger at this point. And it got me to thinking, what is Apple doing? And I was reminded recently about a concept video that Apple did back in 1987 for something called the Knowledge Navigator. There it is in the lower right-hand corner of your screen there. This was done during the John Scully era after Steve Jobs was forced out. And I want you to watch the entire clip of this at lon.tv slash Apple Navigator. I'm gonna play a small portion of it that I cut up a little bit just to show you some key parts, but it's worth watching the entire thing. You can find this over at Blake Patterson's YouTube channel. He's a great uh, preservationist of Apple videos. I actually saw this when I was a kid back in the early 90s, probably with the same recording that's in his video here. I signed up as an Apple user group with a couple of friends so we could get some free stuff from Apple and they would send videos like this. And I was blown away by this concept, but it appeared to me at the time when I saw it as just total science fiction. But today this looks very much like a feasible concept and I think this might actually be what Apple's desire is with AI. And this is probably what they're going to end up rolling out. So we're going to play a few portions of this. I'm going to give you some analysis of it, but definitely watch the whole thing. It's about five or six minutes long. Definitely not suitable for today's TikTok attention spans, but it is an interesting watch nonetheless. But let's take a look at a few choice clips from this concept video. You've had three messages. Your graduate research team in Guatemala, just checking in. Robert Jordan, a second semester junior, requesting a second extension on his term paper. And your mother reminding you about your father's... Surprise birthday party next Sunday. Today, you have a faculty lunch at 12 o'clock. You need to take Kathy to the airport by 2. You have a lecture at 4.15 on deforestation in the Amazon rainforest. Right. So what Apple is kind of demonstrating here way back in 1987 is this concept of an AI agent. And this concept, of course, went into the Newton that they made not too long after this video was put out, along with what we would consider Siri doing today, where you could say, what's on my calendar and what's in my email inbox? However, here it was anticipating what the user was looking for when they first turned on their device. But it gets more interesting. Let's take a look at the next segment. Let me see the lecture notes from last semester. No, that's not enough. I need to review more recent literature. Pull up all the new articles I haven't read yet. Journal articles only? Mm Mm-hmm, fine. Your friend Jill Gilbert has published an article about deforestation in the Amazon. Now here's where I think it gets a lot more interesting because it is anticipating what he's looking for and requesting some of the lecture notes from last year on that topic. But then it dives in deeper knowing that he's friends with somebody who's got a published article and it recommends that to him. Again, science fiction back in 1987, but totally doable today if you can get the models working correctly. Contact Jill. I'm sorry, she's not available right now. I left a message that you had called. And here is where I think Apple can really innovate on the AI concept, where he makes a request to call his friend Jill. He tries to reach her, she's not available. Maybe she's got the do not disturb button on but the agent leaves a message on his behalf, basically working as his assistant proactively to interact with somebody else. While you were busy, your mother called again to remind you to pick up the birthday cake. Mm, Fine, fine, fine. Um, Print this article before I go. Now printing. Okay, I'm going to lunch now. If Kathy calls, tell her I'll be there at two o'clock. Also, find out if I can set up a meeting tomorrow morning with um, Tom Lee. Enjoy your lunch. Hello, Professor Bradford is away at the moment. Would you like to leave a message? Michael, this is your mother. I know that you're there. And then as he's getting up for lunch here, he gives it instructions for what to say to Kathy when she calls him back because he's going to be away from his desk. He wants it to set up a meeting with somebody else that it's going to do for him. And if you think about the other side of these transactions, perhaps All of these people, like Kathy and the other guy he's setting a meeting up with, also have these agents working on his behalf. And I know from my perspective, 
One of the biggest time consumers for me is just setting up meetings and calls with everybody. I don't have a secretary or an assistant or somebody that can do all this stuff for me. So it'd be a heck of a lot easier to have my agent go work with somebody else's agent uh, to set these things up and get things in motion. And it doesn't seem all that far off at this point, given the fact that these language models have gotten so good over a short period of time. So if I had to predict what's going on with Apple and AI right now, I think they are very much focused internally on developing these AI agent concepts and coming up with a killer app for the AI era here, where you've got some tools that can really improve people's lives and efficiencies and have these tools work with each other on behalf of their users. It doesn't seem all that far off any longer, and I think it's something totally feasible. One other little sign here is that back in February, Apple released this weird app called Apple Invites, and it's designed to manage parties that you invite people to, or meetings, and it also works with some of the iCloud services to share photos of the party after the fact, but it just seems such a weird, random application for Apple to make. It's just kind of like a random utility that a smaller developer might put together, yet here it is as an official Apple application. It's not all that popular yet. It's just kind of sitting out there, but it's just kind of weird that Apple would focus on something that an agent could provide a lot of added value to. So we'll keep an eye on this, and I predict, maybe not next year, maybe not the year after that, but when Apple finally does their big AI push, this agent concept is going to be the thing and it's gonna be like, have my Siri call your Siri and we'll do lunch sort of activity here. Now, I did wanna show you though some things that I've been doing because I'm sick of waiting for agents to help me out. And so I've started coding up my own using a great open source utility called N8N. I am hosting this on my Synology NAS in the closet there. It runs in a Docker container and you can link up your automations with most of the major language models out there. And I've done some cool stuff. So let me show you something that's working really well and another thing that's working not so well. Now, one of the cool things about N8N is that it doesn't require much code to operate. Now, this is something called my morning agent email. Now, this is not interactive, but it does something very useful. So it fires off every morning at 7 a.m. It looks at my calendars and shows me what I've got going on today. It also looks at some RSS feeds for all of the gadget websites that I follow along with all of the cord cutting websites that I follow. It compiles all this information, and then what it does is it goes out to Google Gemini to analyze all of these RSS feeds and find things that I might find of interest for my YouTube channel. These have pretty long prompts here. I can show you what the prompt looks like. So let me get this thing expanded here so you can kind of read it. So it says, you're an assistant to Lon Seidman, host of the YouTube channel, Lon.tv. I define what tools it has available to it. I'll zoom in here for you. Um, and I give it very specific instructions about what you need to look for along with how to format stuff because it has to put it into HTML format uh, when it works its way further down the line. So it fires off in the morning. It goes through this entire process. And what I get, and I'm really, really actually surprised by how good this is turning out, what I get is this email. So it says, you know, good morning and here's your update. And this is um, actually designed by an AI also as far as its look and feel. So I basically just vibe coded this if you wanna call it that. But here you've got your upcoming meetings and then I've got all of my cord cutting stories here that I may want to share with you. By the way, if you are not following me on all of the major social media platforms, you're missing a lot of stuff because I just share links out randomly, sometimes most of the time without any commentary, things that I think you all might find of interest. And I also push out emails uh, every time I upload a new video and once a week. And I've got links to all of that stuff in the video description if you want to see it. So when you follow me and you see me sharing things, a lot of times it comes from this morning briefing uh, that I have here. And I'll dive more into how I'm using N8N for some other concepts as well. But isn't this cool? So in the morning when I get up and have my morning coffee and get the kids ready for school, I've got just a snapshot of what my day is going to look like. And then I have another version of this that fires off in the afternoon, so in case new things developed, I can take a look at that. These RSS feeds I aggregate on another Docker container. I'll have to show you how this all works in a longer video. And it looks at about 80 different headlines uh, per run. And I found generally there's only about 40 or 50 stories that are generated every day across all these sites. So it's really good. And it's very, very useful and a really good example of kind of the first part of that Apple video 
where the guy's getting his morning briefing from his AI assistant. Now, what's not working so well is this one. And uh, what this is, is an agent that would allow me to schedule events similar to what that guy was doing in the video. So what this does is it takes input either from email uh, or via Telegram, which for some reason is the best way to message into an N8N uh, thing right now. And what I can do, for example, and I'll show you an uh, example of this actually running here, is, hey, when is Lon available today? And it's doing this first part really well in that it's communicating back to the person that here are the time blocks that he's available. And then when I give it confirmation to book, it's, it's sometimes able to book me and other times not. So it's just not working consistently enough that I can have this start uh, working with people that want to set up times with me. So we're getting there. And on maybe 30% of the time, it actually creates the event and emails the person and lets them know what's going on. But the guts are here for this to actually work if I keep at it a little bit longer. I did find that most of the models were failing on getting my availability correct. I had to be very specific about how to look through each block of time in the calendar because they were very lazily looking at the calendar components. It wasn't until GPT-5 came out that it could actually accurately tell somebody whether or not I was available, and that's why I'm using OpenAI. The problem with OpenAI, of course, is that I have to pay every time uh, this agent fires off. So I just haven't rolled this out yet because it's just not working the way I want it to at the moment. Uh, what's ne neat, though, is that on my morning briefing email, I'm using Google Gemini's free tier, so I'm able to get all of the Gemini power available to me uh, without having to pay beyond my Google subscription. So it's nice to have API access as part of that. There is a limit to it, but for what I'm doing here, it's perfectly fine. But the Gemini model was just not working uh, with the agent here. So the, the guts are here, right? This is all doable. And I think if Apple can get this working to the point where it's simple for the consumer to use, uh, they could roll out a really killer AI implementation that has immediate impact and efficiency uh, for users. Now, of course, we're seeing the uh, articles now that the open web is kind of falling apart given how people are now using AI more than perhaps search, or maybe we're starting to see trending in that direction. But Apple has never been a search company, but what seems to be at the moment the killer app for most consumers is that search-like experience where you're having AI get you answers to things in a way that's more efficient than searching for them yourself. And I think the next step here is to bring in the agent component where agents are working on your behalf. And there are some folks out there who've got agents sort of working for them, but the average consumer is not gonna go through the effort to put together this N8N workflow that I am. So I think if Apple can really master this, uh, they will have something really killer on their hands, and that is what I think they are working on. So let me know what you thought down in the comments below. It's time for some engagement, and I'll talk to you next time. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.